What makes Kubernetes or cloud native so complex? So when it comes to um, complexity of Kubernetes, I'd say, well, first of all, you know, the foundation of Kubernetes is uh, container scheduling and container orchestration. And if uh, if you want to, you know, operate workloads that are big enough, and container orchestration gets um, fairly complex. You know, it's it's just a complex problem to solve. So there's a certain a lower barrier of complexity in Kubernetes that's just unavoidable. However, you know, the container orchestration part of Kubernetes, you know, has its complexity in, in implementation, but it's uh, hiding that under, you know, wonderful abstractions and, and it makes it fairly simple for people to use. So the application developer experience is, isn't is um, dominated by that complexity too much. So you can still express, um, you know, still get, you know, applications and services to run, you know, without having to, you know, deal with all the possible options to do that. So I think they have did a good job here. But what increases complexity over time is less you know, the problem of running one single Kubernetes cluster, but it's more, you know, dealing with a lot of Kubernetes clusters. That's definitely, uh, you know, inviting some complexity, especially because you rarely run a Kubernetes cluster as it is. Uh, but instead, there's a growing ecosystem of Kubernetes extensions. So the ability of Kubernetes to, uh, you know, be extended by uh, custom resource definitions and controllers um, you know, has, you know, forged Kubernetes to become the framework for building cloud automation these days. And so that ecosystem with a lot of possibilities in extensions, that's adding another layer of complexity. And if you combine, you know, all these things, you'd have a lot of Kubernetes clusters. Each Kubernetes cluster may look different. Um, and, and that's a complexity that also affects the operations because it creates a lot of operational friction if you if you don't apply you know best practices and automation in a rigorous way. If you look at the complexity, if you look at ecosystem, because you know sometimes technology come in and you know the ecosystem matures and then the focus shifts to the users. And we are talking a lot about developer stories these days. Uh, do you see that this complexity will go away, or you think no complexity is here to stay? stay what we have to do is make it simpler so a lot of folks can you know start i mean they're already using it but you know uh, they can consume kubernetes and all these cloud technology in a much better way well first of all you know when it's about you know complexity and, and dealing with complexity i'd say about kubernetes uh, you know on its own that the solutions out there to deal with kubernetes they became more mature over the t over the years so that reduces complexity in the sense that it becomes simpler to bootstrap Kubernetes clusters. You don't have to have that expert knowledge right away to get your hands on a Kubernetes cluster. But at the same time, by adding more features to Kubernetes and adding more extensions that are in demand regularly, any Kubernetes offering also requires a certain amount of you know, popular Kubernetes extensions to be there. And then we enter slowly you know, an area that's that's not as developed as as you may think, which is lifecycle managing, you know, extensions and, and managing you know multiple extensions in a graceful way. Again, I'm looking at that from the perspective of running a lot of Kubernetes clusters. So if you think about most extensions, they'll they'll give you the ability to apply, let's say, um, YAML specifications as as one way to to install them. And then there could be another package manager. It could be a Helm chart, or it could be an OLM package or anything like it. But the question is, um, if, if you want to run you know, a lot of Kubernetes clusters, and there are so many different ways of lifecycle managing Kubernetes if the YAML specification layer is not what you want, um, then the question is, which tools do you want to use, and how good are they? So when it comes to um, you know data service automation, which is one of our passions, we've tried you know several of those lifecycle management tools, for example, um, and and none of them is really suitable to cover it all. And even if you accept multiple of them to be coexisting, you know, it it does not feel you know as as 
you know, easy as it should. So I think that's an area of ongoing development is, is if there are more extensions, how to deal with them gracefully and guide those extensions through their life cycle gracefully. Because in the end, you know, application developers, they will set up a cluster once, you know, develop their applications. But when their applications develop, they also have to life cycle manage all the, the extensions these applications depend on. So it will be essential, like, like when using libraries in your code, it's like, do you have a good package manager that does, you know, complexity management and dependency management is in general a hard problem to solve. And I think it's, it's one of the bleeding edges in Kubernetes these days, especially looking at a, a large number of Kubernetes clusters. With a, a good CI and CD pipeline, you can manage, you know, the life cycle of a single cluster with a few extensions with ease, but at scale, Large organizations, that's a different story. 